Well, you are listening to The Meeting House here on Faith Radio. It is great to welcome back to the program the CEO of Marriage Helper. Her name is Kimberly Beam Holmes. In fact, Kimberly was with me just about three months ago. It was right before Valentine's Day, and there has been some news in the area of marriage. Kimberly, obviously, your organization has been quite successful in helping to save and strengthen marriages. And we know that your organization is based on Christian principles, on biblical principles. We know that God offers a prescription in his word for healthy marriages, and he has a very high view of marriage. And so we're going to be talking about marriage today in light of some relationships that have actually attracted quite a bit of attention here as of late. In fact, just this week, there was the announcement that came down from Bill and Melinda Gates. Of course, <laughs> Bill Gates and his ingenuity touches so many lives every day. Uh, in fact, because of Bill Gates, this computer that I'm using right now to actually do this interview is a product of the company that he launched. Well, not only is Bill Gates known for his work, his inventiveness with respect to Microsoft, but he and his wife, Melinda, have the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and they issued a joint statement. There was an article that ran on foxnews.com, and embedded within it was their statement. And basically, they've released, it's a joint statement. They say they They've made the decision to end their marriage. It says over the last 27 years, we have raised three incredible children and built a foundation that works all over the world to enable all people to lead healthy, productive lives. They say they are going to continue to work together, but as they state, we no longer believe we can grow together as a couple in this next phase of our lives. Kimberly, you have the opportunity to interface with couples on a regular basis. You can look at a marriage and just the limited amount of information that we have about the the workings of the Gates marriage. I'm sure that there are some signs here that you've encountered in your work with marriages. So while we don't obviously rejoice in any marriage breaking up, And this is something there's been quite a bit of discussion and you don't want to speculate by any chance, by by any means, but there are some things that we can take away from this that perhaps people can use and apply in order to make their marriages better. So as you read this statement and as you become more familiar with this overall situation, give us an idea. What are you, what are you seeing? What did you observe? I believe it's very unfortunate that they have said that they don't see themselves being able to grow together into their future because number one, I don't think it sets a good precedent or model of what a long-term relationship should look like because number two, it's just not true. Couples can live and grow and continue to grow together for decades until until death do us part as it should be. And so to say that that we just don't see ourselves growing together, I believe is, I don't think it's the true story, but I also don't think it's the example to set. I I believe what has happened is that this divorce, this split and separation is more than likely the result of their very success their very successful lives and careers. For the past 27 years of them being together, Microsoft has grown, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And while you could say they did that together, they still were focusing on their own interests, their own things. And what we know from research is that when couples do things that that take them apart from each other, only focusing on their interests, their work, their careers, then it will take them apart. And unless they're intentionally doing something to bring them back together, having a shared mission, a shared value, then couples can kind of wake up, so to say, one day, especially after the kids have left the house, they're entering into a next chapter of life, and then look back and say, I don't know that I even know who you are anymore. I don't even know that I like you. Maybe we would be happier apart, but they're never actually happier apart. Maybe in the short term, but the best thing they could do 
is work on the relationship, recommit to being committed and do the things that will bring them back together in order for that fulfilling, long lasting marriage. Well, let me ask you this. Someone might say, okay, so you talk about working on a common interest together. We've got a foundation and we are doing, it says that uh, this foundation is working all over the world to enable all people to lead healthy, productive lives. That sounds like a pretty significant uh, common interest that they are, jo- are, uh, are, are pursuing. You're right. It absolutely <laughs> does. The question is, are they actually working together in it? Mm. And At times we've seen, I mean, he, I know has been gone for months at a time. She the same months at a time doing specific parts of that work. And so while I think in theory, doing something like this will give couples and can give couples that shared value, the point is they actually have to do it together and not just as a business. They need to do it together because that is what they want to do because they like being around each other because they want to share their gifts and God given skills and talents with the world. That is a key difference that that is made here. I'm not so sure that they have been doing it in that way. I think it's been more of a business relationship like they've been focusing on. And it does seem like it's almost confused in a sort in a, in a sort of way in that they're saying, well, we can keep doing this. We can keep pursuing the work of the foundation. We're going to continue our work together. As this statement says, it almost sounds like that. Well, you know, we're in this business and the business of the foundation and the business of marriage are kind of interchangeable and almost you know, overlapping to, to some degree, but that's, marriage is not a business relationship. There's a, there's a distinct difference, isn't there? There is. And people often underestimate the negative consequences or effects that divorce is going to have on themselves, on their family, on society as a whole. And they overestimate their ability to get along post-divorce. What we know from research is that after a divorce happens, people, the people who've experienced have 188% increase in likelihood of depression. Their Mm -hmm. social circles begin to divide and split. And that even when children are grown, there is still a negative effect on children when their parents divorce. Now, yes, their children are grown, but now what's going to happen with this divorce is grandchildren are going to have to experience the divorce of their grandparents, any future weddings that might happen. There's going to be two, so to say, two sides of the aisle. It adds this level of stress that no one wants. What I believe we're going to see is number one, let's remember if the relationship is so broken that they are divorcing, then the relationship is broken and it will be broken in a boardroom or it will be broken in a bedroom, but there's no difference. The relationship needs to be healed and fixed. The second thing that we need to see here is that we're going to see the effects of divorce on an incredibly large scale. I mean, we, every person will experience this, but with hundreds of billions of dollars and 200,000 acres of land, then we're 1,600 employees, there's going to be an effect. We may never see it because it may be concealed, but I can guarantee you that this will change their legacy and the ability that they did have to impact people going forward. Kimberly Holmes joining us today here on The Meeting House from Marriage Helper. And Kimberly, let's talk about, and I want to shift to a couple about whom you've written recently, the foxnews.com column that you wrote. And we look at a, another couple, in a sense, they are, or they were part of one of the biggest enterprises, biggest business enterprises on the planet, and there are many who have been saddened by the death of Prince Philip, the husband, longtime husband of Queen Elizabeth of the UK. Now, it's, it's interesting, if you are a viewer of the series The Crown, that, and of course, you, you have to take some of the material that is seen on that, on that series with a grain of salt, but nevertheless, that TV series portrays the marriage of Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth 
as being one that was enduring, although especially in the early stages, there were certainly some, as we might say, some growing pains. There were some struggles on the front end. Nevertheless, here is a couple that upon his death recently, and they were married for quite some time, 70 years. Over 70 years. Mm -hmm. So, so you look at that, there had to be in the fiber of that marriage, there had to be some principles by which the two of them mutually agreed to abide that contributed to the longevity of this marriage. So again, going back to some of your observations, and of course, you've, you've mentioned research. I know that's a big part of what Marriage Helper does. So what have you observed about this marriage, which is really a, a testimony to people all around the world? Absolutely. The number one and first thing that this marriage has is commitment. They decided on the front end that this was something that was worth committing to, and it was something that they were going to commit to even during the hard times. They were married 70 years. They've been together over 80. They've known, she knew Prince Philip. Queen Elizabeth met him when she was 13 years old. And wow. so once they got married, they did, like you said, at the beginning of their marriage, there was wars. There were things that happened that they had to endure and go through, but they were committed to making it work, even with allegations of affairs and infidelity on Prince Philip's part. They still chose that this was a marriage they wanted to be committed to because divorce in their mind was not an option. We know from research that the minute that a couple introduces the word divorce into their conflict or their fights, that it has already started to erode the commitment in the marriage because it brings it up as an option. Now, I'm not saying that there's not situations where divorce might need to happen for safety and well being, but I believe that the majority of the time, most relationships can work through these things and make it work, and that divorce is even thought about way too soon. The other thing that we see with Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth that was so beautiful is their ability to have patience with each other. Prince Philip even said this himself. He said, we have learned that with our annoyances and the things that make each other tick about each other, that the best and greatest gift that we have given each other is to learn to be patient with one another, to forgive, to believe the best about the other. Even when Prince Philip had to take a stand down while Queen Elizabeth became the queen, he said that was difficult for him but he wanted to support her and be there for her, which is that third part, which is showing that appreciation, looking for the good in the other person and being there for them no matter what. That is another key to a successful marriage. Kimberly Holmes from Marriage Helper joining us this afternoon. This is The Meeting House here on Faith Radio. Well, as we begin to wrap up our conversation and what you were just saying about Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth, there are a number of different components that you observed in their relationship. And these are components that as people of faith, as Christians that would be tuning into this conversation, we see that this, this whole notion of commitment and having a high view of marriage, the notion of forgiveness, of believing the best in another person. These are all qualities that are consistent with the teachings of God's word. Absolutely, they are. Absolutely. Well, you had the uh, opportunity in this Fox News column, foxnews.com, to actually compare, and, and again, back to this commitment level, being in it for the long haul, not introducing the concept or the consideration of divorce into a marriage relationship. It worked for Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth for over 70 years. Bill and Melinda Gates now 27 years, and that's really the catalyst of our conversation today, have made the announcement that they've decided to, to get a divorce, but yet they still believe that somehow they can work together in this charitable foundation that they have. Too often, as we see Kimberly, and unfortunately, with the, with the rise in divorce that we see across our country, we know that there are those that, well, they don't want to make the same mistakes of their parents. They don't want to commit. They are afraid, perhaps, that if they enter into a marriage relationship, which is, as I contend, it's a building block of a stable culture, 
So you have a disturbingly strong rise in the the number of couples that are in unmarried cohabitating relationships. And so you compared the the, the prince and the queen to a high profile couple that also has been going through their their share of travail. They are not a married couple, but they kind of think they are. They act like they are to a certain extent, but Make no mistake, they are not, and that would be to that would be a couple that has a very cute, uh, a cute set of nicknames with uh, Alex Rodriguez A Rod and Jennifer Lopez J Lo. So, what's the latest? And then again, we're not. This is not tabloid. We're not. We're not doing tabloid analysis here. We are taking observations and actually, hopefully, being able to apply these these observations and some of the principles that we see into our own lives and, and perhaps to even talk to people around us that may be struggling. So contrast now what you see with the A-Rod and J-Lo with the Queen and Prince Philip. Well, the opposite of what made Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth's relationship so successful is what is ruining J-Lo and A-Rod's relationship, which was they have a lack of commitment. But even going into this, it was going to be more difficult because Jennifer Lopez has already been married three times. And when we look at the research, we, we see that about 50% of marriages, the first marriage ends in divorce, that increases to 60 to 70% of the second marriage will end in divorce. And by the time you get to your third marriage, 85% of those marriages end in divorce. This will be, this would have been may still be, who knows, J-Lo's fourth marriage, which the researchers just stopped doing the statistics on because it continued to go up. But what we can take from that is once someone has decided commitment doesn't mean anything to them, then it's easy for them to leave that relationship. The other thing we see with J-Lo and A-Rod is you're right, they did start acting like a married couple, combining children, combining finances, living together, having sex. And when we do that, when we cohabitate, even research, this isn't just, I love when biblical values are just amplified in the social science research mm -hmm. that we find. Mm -hmm. Uh, research shows us that cohabitation leads to higher divorce rates, leads to people being unhappier, leads to less satisfying relationships long-term because you're not committing to the long-term. God knew what he was telling us when he said that you should be married and no one should put you asunder, that you will be tied together. And that is your one person. God knew he was saving us, that he was giving us the best form possible of a relationship that we should have. And when we see people enter into that without, without that commitment, it leads to so much hurt. I, I've heard it said before that it's like if that commitment or that love without commitment is like jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. It feels very exciting and exhilarating, but it has a very bad ending. Mm. And unfortunately, you have those that would say by entering into this relationship, it's, it's kind of like buying a car. You want to have a test drive of the relationship. But when we're dealing with the depth of emotions here and with the sanctity of marriage, that, that analogy to me doesn't hold water. It doesn't. We What we need as humans is we are looking to know that someone else is going to love us and be there for us unconditionally in a long-term committed relationship. That's it. That's what we need. That's what we're looking for. That is why divorce is so harmful to people. That is why it hurt. It has all of these negative consequences on us. And that is why the need for commitment is so high because we want to know that this person's going to be there for us for the rest of our lives, no matter what. That is what is needed for a healthy marriage. And Marriage Helper is, is actually devoted to saving marriages and providing the strong principles. Give us a 60 second summary, if you would, about the work that you do. 
At Marriage Helper, we believe that every marriage can be saved Mm. if they are given the tools and things that they need to go and change the way that they have been having their relationship before. And so what we love to do is we love to give hope to every single marriage, every single situation. And we do that through workshops that we have, both online and in person, online courses that we offer, and relationship coaching that we offer as well. But I, I can tell you that we have seen almost every situation you can imagine that everyone else has said, give up. There's no use. Maybe you should just move on and divorce. And we have still seen those marriages saved over a 70% success rate by the grace of God with what we do. How can people connect with you online? You can find us at marriagehelper.com. You can also visit youtube.com slash marriage helper and see tons of free YouTube videos is there as well as check out our podcast called relationship radio, where you can learn more about how to start doing things to make a difference in your relationship. The CEO of marriage helper, Kimberly Holmes, joining us today here on the meeting house on faith radio, Kimberly, thank you so much. Very insightful conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Bob.